So in real life, you're the CEO of Roblox, but on Roblox, you're Builder Man. You know that name? It, we just thought it up when um, it was maybe two weeks after we launched, and we were all picking our own usernames. And everyone picked one, and I just said, Builder Man. So you've had the same avatar since 2004. That's right. That's awesome. Do you still play? I do. I wish I could play the whole day. <laughs> I have to be a CEO. <laughs> So how often do you play? I'm probably on every day, but not as much as I would like. I have four yeah. kids. I have a nine-year-old son who's on Roblox a lot. He said his favorite games are the tycoon games. Oh, Lumber Tycoon, Theme Park Tycoon. Gym I love tycoon. those. I love all of those. I have a bit of a theory. I have four kids. Oh, you and do? They're, yeah, Aww. they're now in... They've grown up watching me do this, yeah. and now they're, they're pretty savvy social media people, yeah. but I'm optimistic someday they're gonna be using Roblox for some other reason, uh, like communicating right. or more working or something like that. And then they're gonna be like, oh gosh, I was like forced to be on Roblox. <laughs>
I also heard you were the captain of your high school TV quiz team. Yeah, so <laughs> think of think of Minnesota in the 1970s and 80s where every weekend two different schools compete, four students from each school, you know, in a really funny four by four configuration on a quiz bowl thing. And so yeah, Eden Prairie had a pretty good quiz bowl team. You eventually made it to Silicon Valley, yeah. you went to Stanford, you started a company called Knowledge Revolution in the 80s where users could create and test physics experiments. That's right. So the, the, the science kid in you coming to life. <laughs> Yeah, you know, went to school, had a couple hard years with jobs that mm -hmm. weren't really that exciting, took a few months off, and I got really excited about, th there's this whole blossoming educational software marketplace, the Macintosh had just been introduced, and it was just really interesting and exciting. I did a survey of all of that, and a lot of the educational software was very pre-canned, so when we looked at physics, it was a whole different idea. Could we make a wide open laboratory where you could build anything, any physics experiment, bring it to life, measure it, see what it feels like? You sold that company, made some money, you became an investor, and you invested in Friendster. Oh yeah, wow. I, I had a Friendster account. I'm dating myself a little bit here, but I had a Friendster account. I'm curious what you learned from the early days of social media. Yeah, so one thing I learned is it was really fun to invest, but it's not my sweet spot. Mm. Like my sweet spot is trying to build and create things. I remember, I think, having account number 79 <laughs> on Friendster and just seeing that wonderful thing of finding other people, friend of friend, playing around with that early user interface. It's a little bit almost thinking of interactive physics where we were simulating the world and then Friendster, seeing how important social is. Those are a couple of the components that have come together in Roblox. So when you started Roblox in 2004, what was the idea back then? The feeling of this new category for me started feeling almost inexorable. It's a category that people have been talking about in sci-fi for many, many years. We've seen futurists talk about it. We've seen a lot of movies. We were thinking, yes, immersive 3D co-experience. Kids flocked to Roblox during yeah. the pandemic. You went public in the middle of the pandemic, 2021, $45 billion market cap. We spoke on that day. Even you have said that kind of growth won't keep up. What kind of growth can we expect from Roblox in normal times? We believe every, it's going to be a part of all of our lives. It's going to be the way we communicate, um, how people get to go to school when they can't get into school. How people, so they're going to go to school in Roblox? If I happen to be taking my science class and I can't get into the classroom and we're dissecting a frog, we'll probably dissect a frog in something like Roblox on mm. a simulation which I think is going to be very, very powerful. And for our company, where there's a lot of people that are going to end up working all around the world, some of us will be in the office, some won't, having a common 3D place where we can have those water cooler conversations where everyone has a desk, but we get that serendipitous thing where we both happen to go over and chat, I think also is going to be very big. Your goal is to build an entirely new category of human co-experience. How do you moderate that on such a massive scale? Everybody is talking about the metaverse as something that's going to happen in the future, but there's an argument to be made that Roblox has already built a metaverse. What do you think? I think we've started. And um, it goes back to how exciting it is to, to have a company in this space that I think has ultimately got so many years of growth to it and is a new category following other types of technologies. There's still so much innovation to be done and there's so much invention to be done in this category that it's mind boggling. The critics think that metaverse, the term, is just marketing. How do you respond to that? This type of technology is much more difficult than the net or the web, which was another huge thing that we saw predicted and has started to come. But, but I think we're seeing early signs of it. When Mark Zuckerberg announced his plan to own the metaverse and change Facebook's name to Meta as if it was something new, did that kind of bother you? Um, no, of course not. <laughs> it's really hard to predict in five to 10 or 20 years 
what are the companies that really figure it out? And there's so many elements of innovation that are needed. Um, having a UGC community, one of our strengths, we think that's like a huge starting point for us, but we're early in our quest for innovation here. Roblox has built a huge business selling Robux. Does this evolve into a much bigger marketplace? It was this revelation that people would ultimately make a living on platforms like this that started this digital currency. It's very Roblox-centric in that we're a systems company or a utility, so it has formed this robust economy. It's allowed us to keep Roblox, you know, Roblox is free for the vast majority. Would Roblox ever partner with some of these other companies working on the metaverse, whether it is Meta or Unity or Epic or Microsoft? the core technology of you know how are we going to ultimately support 50,000 people in real time on a phone going to a concert together and waving at your friends i think that's going to be a lot of engineering work mm. that each company is going to be working on and it's going to be really hard as far as ultimately can an avatar go from one place to another i think there'll be lightweight ways of starting to think about that. So what role do you think Apple and Android should play in the metaverse? And, and or would their policies need to change to really support this vision? The biggest thing we would take advantage of if it were to happen is a change in those store fees. Mm. We, we stay out of it. We let Google and Apple kind of run their businesses. But when we think about more and more developers making a living on platforms like us and having to build stuff, if those store fees were to change, we would move most of that money back to our developers. Your goal is to build an entirely new category of human co-experience, the next phase of human interaction. Yeah. How do you moderate that on such a massive scale? Yeah, and it's... are you doing a good enough job? In the third week when we were live, you can go imagine Eric and myself back in our small office. Eric and I said, oh my gosh, safety and civilities, that's what we're gonna have to do it. We had maybe 100 people at the time chatting on Roblox. We saw a few, not that egregious, but early signs, and we just made the call, this is gonna be the foundation of what we do. In the early years of Roblox, as we've gotten bigger, we've gotten to the point where there's thousands of moderators, every image that goes on our platform gets human reviewed. We filter text very stringently, especially for 13 and under players. We use a lot of AI and ML to help do this. Uh, we're always getting better, um, but it is a key thing for us. How optimistic are you about AI and tech being able to do that? I'm really actually optimistic. We would never compare to the real world because our standards are so much more stringent. But I do believe this will just keep getting better and better. And I think over time, it'll get to the point where if a six-year-old is on our platform, it's literally as if the parents wanted to be there with them watching everything will be able to offer that type of thing. Now, a lot of parents are terrified. They're terrified of a, a future metaverse. They don't understand the parental controls. Do you understand that feeling? We do, we actually have to, I think it creates a higher standard for us because I think we can't assume every parent is gonna get that involved with their kids. There have been some serious content challenges, you know, stories about Roblox being a playground for virtual fascists. Yeah, this is our Roblox. Wow. There was just this story about Kim Kardashian's own child seeing an ad for a game that claimed to have a yeah. sex tape of her. Yeah. What happened there? That was very unfortunate. There was a text blurb up very shortly that very, very few people saw. We took the place down. We moderated that user and they're off our platform. It was not, the video was never on our platform. Mm -hmm. There was no imagery on our platform. Mm -hmm. It was a very short mention, mm -hmm. but very unfortunate. And um, well, you know, our vision is to be the most civil place for everyone. I asked Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Alphabet and Google, this question about kids and tech habits and screen time, and he said it's something that even stresses him out. You know, this is the guy who runs one of the most powerful technology companies in the world. Um, I have four kids, you have four kids. Did it stress you out? Like, how did you totally. deal with your kids? I think it highlights how much um, it's a responsibility of both platforms like us, as well as parents. You know, we're all trying to figure this out. I think the one thing that we're very encouraged is that the time spent on Roblox tends to be more like hanging out together or being on the phone together or 
doing stuff together, and a lot less of it is isolated, either consuming content by myself or grinding away at something by myself. So we do like the fact that most of this is either social or involved in creation. What about entertainment? Would Roblox ever make a Netflix show? You've been investing in high fidelity graphics. What is the end game here for, you know, more human, more realistic avatars? I'll look way out like a science fiction writer and talk about it and I what I'm talking about now is super difficult. The end game sometimes we talk about, we would go together to a rock concert or whatever concert you like. Um, we would be there with 50,000 other people. It would feel like a movie. It would feel like real life. So are you pushing towards something like Meta Horizon Worlds? Is, does that sound, you know, more experiences like that for adults? We sometimes think of Roblox ultimately as fading into the background as a utility like the electric grid. Um, even though it's photorealistic and there's all these awesome avatars and connection and identity around the world, the things we start seeing built on this are a wide range of things. So you imagine this not just for kids, but for everyone, adults That's too? Right. Okay. Absolutely. What about entertainment? Would Roblox ever make a Netflix show? We would love it if one of our developers made a Netflix show. So mm. we, we, would, we would feel much more authentic if one of the creators on Roblox who's coming up with avatars and stories and ideas and characters, like the, we want them to be in the limelight. Roblox shares took a dive on the back of Netflix results, which obviously plummeted. Are investors reading too much into the connection there? I think our company is somewhat unique. And what is very exciting to go to work and be the CEO is being in a market like this, you know, where we think ultimately billions of people are gonna use this type of technology. And the other th exciting thing about this market, there are so many big inventions that still have to happen. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're pretty mature, but inside our company, we realize like there's six or seven big inventions we need to make to get to that next step. Would Roblox ever consider more in-game advertising? Yeah, there's a funny trivia um, note I would share to all the Roblox fans out there. There was a time, the very first way we monetized was advertising. And then there was also a time when we had pre-roll video on Roblox. Um, that's all gone now. And it's gone for a couple of reasons. We didn't want it to interfere with the user experience. Mm -hmm. And also our, our virtual economy has become such a powerful way to power this that we are able to take that down. In the future though, I think there's a certain type of advertising that is kid safe, that is um, immersive, that doesn't get in your way. And how do you make sure that doesn't take away from the ethos of what makes Roblox great? Yeah, I think our uh, the people on Roblox, you know, they're there to authentically connect with their friends and as long as, um, what we're doing with these brands is very clear, non-deceptive, appropriate for those ages. I think they'll, they'll figure out the balance of how much time do we go into a store versus how much time do we go to a crazy adventure tycoon and you know build an amusement park together. So either way, this could be a huge new revenue stream for you. I believe it's an awesomely huge revenue stream. And at the same time, we've been very gentle towards it. So as you look ahead, what do you think are the biggest challenges Roblox will face? If our vision plays out, which we hope it does, and we have people of all ages on the platform and we're around the world, I think maintaining that civility as we grow, as we have older people who might want to do go to a political rally, thinking ways to do that in a systemic way, that's a big challenge. It takes a lot of thought. I think thinking through the technology, I, I really like we're a very technology-driven company, so it's fun to be running a company where we have to do these seven big inventions and you know what we're doing right now isn't going to cut it so knowing that technology challenge is super interesting we do a little rapid fire section just Fun. to get Let's, to know okay. you a little I'm gonna better i'm going to try to be as spontaneous uh, so, as i can yeah. <laughs> um first question what's your morning routine uh wake up uh go outside on my porch do a crossfit workout take a shower go to work where are you most productive home or office both. Um, different types of productivity, home, zen state, flow state at time, office, connecting, being together, brainstorming. What's your favorite show right now? What are you binging? 
Oh my gosh, if, if you looked at my YouTube history, it'd be, it's, it's this weird mechanical stuff, off-road vehicles and rockets and ships and big waves. Best life hack. I think it all gets down to the joy of health, really. Like if, if I'm not you know, feeling centered, both sleep, exercise, diet, all of that, everything else just completely falls. You used to have a talk radio show. Yeah. Now that I've met you in person, I, I get this. No way. I see how you, you'd be, you'd You're be kidding. pretty fun to listen to, yeah. What was your style? Like, what was I, your jam? I, I th so my jam was, I would say, starting in college when I would have insomnia at 2 a.m. I would turn on talk radio and you know, all those famous KGO people, Bill Wattenberg, Ray Taliaferro, all the, just listen to the people calling in. So I, um, after Knowledge Revolution was acquired and I had a year, I had a little time to dabble. My jam was really trying to talk about outrageous topics, you know, gambling, other controversial things. It was in a small market in Santa Cruz. So I would typically, it was really hard to get people to call in. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like, like, call your mom, you know, please like, call. So <laughs> it's really scary if you're a DJ and no one's calling in. So I'd, I, I made it really controversial. I have people come on and debate interesting topics. If you could have dinner with Steve Jobs or Walt Disney, who would you pick? Both. <laughs> you can't um, pick both. I guess I would have to slightly lean Disney just because he was not just the usher of the innovation, but actually was kind of part of the sum of the innovation. But I think Steve leaned much more on finding the people to drive that innovation. Best advice for your 20s? Um, don't freak out if between the age of 22 and 25, everything is a disaster. Best advice for your 40s? Life is short. It's such a valuable commodity. Every day, what you do, your friends, your time, your family is so important. So how do you define work-life integration? I don't like the word balance. Yeah, I would say, can I make my Roblox job better than anything else I would do? Like, can it be better than retiring? Can it be better than a hobby? Can I figure out what my unique job as a CEO, every CEO job is different. Mm -hmm. Like, I like doing it. So can I figure out what my role is? You mentioned your co-founder, Eric Castle, yeah. earlier, who died tragically of cancer yeah. in 2013. If he was here today, what do you think he would think of the Roblox that Roblox has become? Wow, I think he'd be proud. <laughs> It's a good question. Yeah. Like I think he would, um, you know, his um, both of his sons have worked at the company a bit. Um, so yeah, I think he'd be very. Seems proud. like you you miss him. He's uh, just such a brilliant partner. Yeah, and he he also set the standard for taking the long view on how we engineer things. A lot of the technology at Roblox is still, like, you know, his vision lives on. And it goes back to your advice for your forties. Life is short. It is. So. In five years, will the metaverse exist in, in, in the form that you imagine? Or is it, take, does, is it gonna take much longer? Like what's the time horizon? Well, it, it's really interesting, right? Cause we're right in the middle of it right now in a sense with 50 million people every day on our platform, yeah. it's already here. And at the same time, what is ultimately gonna be possible could be five, 10 or 20 years out. So it's, it's all, the metaverse really has existed since online dial-up MUDs, really, 2D, very simple text. You could call that the metaverse. It existed in multiplayer gaming, World of Warcraft. It exists, it exists now with more people. And in 10 or 20 years, it'll exist photorealistically with 50,000 people. You clearly have so much passion for this job. Is Roblox your final stop on your journey? Well, it's definitely my final stop, but I think there's a lot of time ahead of me here. Dave Bazuki, CEO of Roblox, thank you so much.